You saw the soldiers on the wall of the trench shooting down into the trench. Yes, they shot it on trench. And when the shooting started, did she see it or did she hear it? Yes, I saw the soldiers exactly. Some came to save their own colleagues. Others stood there and fired directly towards people. My memory, because... Nurul Azakal said he was also in the trench, hit in the head by the blast and tried to flee with his cousin Sohail. I told to my cousin Sohail, run. We run together, we win. I tried to go climb out from the canal. I succeeded, but I think my cousin escaped. The soldier came directly and they started firing. When did you find out that Swahal was dead? In the morning time. <laughs> when I called my family, is Swahal is okay? They say it. He said murdered. And how was his body? What were the injuries on his body? They were just shooting two bullets, one on head in this side and taken out from this side, and another one on shoulder. A total of 19 survivors CNN has interviewed said they saw people shot or were shot themselves. The US military said the witnesses we spoke to had, quote, jumbled memories from a concussive event and are doing their best to piece together what their brain is unlikely to remember clearly. The volume of testimony from Afghan survivors, though, does present questions as to how so many witnesses could make such similar claims. CNN hired a forensic blast analyst to see what the scene could tell us about the bomb. There's virtually nothing of the concrete infrastructure of this area that has been damaged significantly by a big blast. I do not believe that bomb was big enough to kill 180 people at all. Other experts disagreed, saying the bomb could have killed all those people. But there are enduring questions here from survivors of the blast. For them, the Pentagon's narrative is disputed by memories that haunt them. Now, Wolf, I spent three and a half hours in the Pentagon listening to their version of events, many emails exchanged too, and there remains this extraordinary gap between what they believe happened and the experiences we heard of Afghans on the ground. The US admits the military that they did not speak to Afghan civilians who were there, who survived the blast, and their conclusions are based upon what US personnel told them. And so the question really is now, do they investigate further or are they satisfied with the version of events given to them by their own personnel at the scene. For Afghans, there are demands for answers, certainly, uh, and a horror that they recall that's so different from the Pentagon narrative. Well, we'll stay on top of this excellent, excellent reporting. Nick Payton-Walsh, thank you so much.